We are also keeping a very close eye on tomorrow's primary races in Arizona, Michigan, Missouri, Washington, and in Kansas, which will be the first state to vote on abortion since the Supreme Court ruling that overturned Roe versus Wade. Joining me now, state politics reporter for the Arizona Republic, Stacey Bartanger, also government and politics reporter for the Detroit Free Press, Dave Boucher, and opinion editor for the Wichita Eagle, Diane Leffler. Great to have you all with me. Diane, let's start with you. Voters in Kansas will be the first in almost half a century here to vote on the right to get an abortion. I did talk with Kansas's Secretary of State earlier. He told us that the referendum could actually bring in an extra 200,000 voters to the polls. Will that help Democrats, you think? Break it all down. Well, what we've got here, uh, our state Supreme Court ruled that uh, that women have a fundamental right to an abortion and uh, the value of the both amendment, which is what this is called, uh, would change that uh, and revoke that right and put all abortion regulation in the hands of the state legislature. Um, I think uh, the, political, the political side of this is really hard to read at this moment. Um, in Kansas, Kansas has been uh, legislatively, at least, uh, a very anti-abortion state, but the pro-choice factions have been, you know, fairly complacent about that until Roe v. Wade uh, was struck down. And now uh, I am seeing, I've been here 25 years, I'm seeing a, a pro-choice movement here that I've never seen before. Uh, whether they can catch up to the pro-life movement, uh, that's an open question. Polls have shown it fairly close, um, so it's really going to be a turnout election. It's it's about who comes to the polls. Interesting. All right, we're going to be watching that closely, of course. Stacy, we're also following the governor's race in Arizona. It's generating, of course, lots of headlines right now, pitting endorsements from Donald Trump against Mike Pence, quite the talker. Break this race down for us and just the impact that former President Trump still has. Yeah, I mean, uh, a week or so ago, we had former President Trump and his former Vice President Mike Pence in the state on the same day. Um, you know, if ever there was a litmus test for the former president's grip on the Republican Party, I think people are looking to Arizona as the next test to see what happens. Um, the former president has endorsed in all of our major state races, um, even down into the state Senate races. And so we are really watching to see how those candidates do at the polls tomorrow. Yeah, so are we. And Dave, you've been paying close attention to the Republican governor's race there in Michigan. What do we need to pay attention to? It's a wide open field for governor. There are five candidates who are still in the race. President Trump issued an endorsement on Friday for a West Michigan businesswoman, Tudor Dixon. Uh, some of the other candidates in the race had asked Trump to stay out, especially since, you know, absentee ballots have been out for weeks. So while Tudor Dixon, the person who received the endorsement, is seen as the front runner at this point, anything could still happen. Former President Trump has also weighed in on a hotly contested West Michigan congressional race. It involves sitting Congressman Peter Meyer and a challenger, John Gibbs. President Trump has endorsed the challenger. And so, again, this is another uh, indication of the former president's power with the Michigan Republican Party. It's incredible, just state by state, that we're talking about this. And, Dion, how have false election fraud claims played a role in this election, you think? Are there still groups out there peddling Trump's big lie? Um, yeah, there are. Uh, the, the, there's, there's a major... Uh, campaigning right now, trying to get rid of uh, ballot boxes, drop boxes on the sidewalks. Uh, we have about 14 of those here in the, in the county that Wichita's in. And uh, that's been under attack. Um, this also, this election uh, may mark the, uh, it may mark the comeback for uh, Chris Kobach, who uh, has been probably the leading spokesperson for uh, for voter fraud anywhere in the country. Um, so it's, it's, you know, there, there's been, it's almost like they're setting up, a, if they lose, they're setting it up to be, well, we, we were cheated. So it's, it's gonna be very interesting to see how that all goes. 
Mm, indeed. And Stacy, let's talk about the top issues for voters in Arizona. Then we've talked about all the infighting that's going on, but what's really driving people to the polls there, you think, as you've been out there just gumshoeing and, and, and interviewing uh, voters? Yeah, I mean, gas prices might be going down, but inflation is still a very real thing for Arizona voters. They want to know what their next governor and uh, lawmakers are going to do to keep prices lower. Um, certainly as a border state, they care a lot about issues connected to the border and education and water are two very, very important issues um, for Arizonans this cycle. All right, Dave, one more question for you. Abortion will likely be on the ballot in Michigan this November, right, after the Supreme Court decision uh, to overturn Roe versus Wade. So what's the status of abortion rights in Michigan right now, and how big is that issue for voters there at this time? This morning, the Michigan Court of Appeals ruled that an injunction that had been in place preventing prosecutors from enforcing, enforcing a law that banned most abortions did not apply to county prosecutors. So the, the entire state of abortion access has kind of been thrown up into the air as of several hours ago. Uh, Planned Parenthood of Michigan says abortions are still legal. Other people say they are not. And so there's a, there's a question later this fall about whether or not Michigan voters are going to be able to change the Constitution in Michigan to explicitly say there's a right to, to abortion. It's a huge issue driving especially Democratic turner, uh, turnout and voters this cycle. Stay tuned. Stacey Bartinger, Dave Boucher, also Diane Leffler. Appreciate all three of you. We'll be following your reporting and hopefully talk more. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.